Okay, in this problem, we are going to use Laplace transforms to solve this initial value problem. I've written down four different sort of Laplace transform identities that might be useful for this problem. Though, um, fair warning, I'm not going to write down the every single detail of uh, everything that I'm going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to begin by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. So the Laplace transform of the left-hand side, so let's do the Laplace transform of x double prime. So it's x, uh, s squared times the Laplace transform of x. Then it's going to be minus s times x of 0, but x of 0 is equal to 0, and then minus x prime of 0, so minus 1 like this plus 2 times the Laplace transform of f prime, uh, x prime, that's s, times big X of s, and now it should be minus x of 0, but x of 0 is 0 again, so we're going to not include that term, plus 2x of s, and then the Laplace transform of the right-hand side, we're going to use a combination of this rule and this rule, or if you just remember from class um, where we derived this, this is going to be e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus 2 pi s divided by s. And now what we're going to do, we're just going to solve this for x of s. And when you do that, what you get is the following. You get that x of s is equal to e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus 2 pi s divided by s times s squared plus 2s plus 2 plus 1 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 2. Okay, this is just algebra. Okay, so now what we're going to do, so remember, we want to look in the Laplace transform table, in particular these four identities that I have here, and we always just want to kind of take what we have and make it look more and more like one of these pieces. So if you notice this kind of purple identity that I have here, or blue-ish purple, whatever color that is, it's e to the minus s times f of something. So we come down over here, notice we have e to the minus something times this. So I'm going to rewrite this a little bit in the following way. This is e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus 2 pi s times 1 divided by s times s squared plus 2s plus 2. Uh, and the other part I'm just going to leave like it is. So this is 1 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do next, this piece right here in the brackets, we're going to complete, or sorry, we're going to do partial fractions on this. And when we do partial fractions, we get the following. This is e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus 2 pi s. Okay, and I'm not going to uh, go through the whole partial fractions thing, but this is 1 half divided by s minus 1 half times s plus 2 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 2. Okay, that's just doing, going from here to here. All this is is partial fractions. Okay, and then I'm just going to carry down this piece. So that's 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 1. Okay, so now, again, so my, my goal is kind of I want to make what I have here look like one of these pieces. And the first thing that I notice is that the denominators of these e to the at pieces, e to the a sine bt and e to the, uh, sorry, this should be e to the at. e to the at cosine bt, it's s minus a squared plus b squared. So what that tells me I need to do, uh, that tells me that I need to complete the square in the denominator. And so this is going to be e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus 2 pi s. Okay, I'm going to factor out the 1 half here and the 1 half here. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So that's going to leave me with 1 over s, and now I'm going to complete the square here. So that's going to be s plus 2 divided by s plus 1 squared plus 1. Again, that's just completing the square. And then this is the same denominator. So this is 1 over s plus 1 squared 
plus 1. And now we're getting to a point, we're almost to the point where we can say, uh, say exactly what the inverse Laplace transform is. Uh, we know the inverse Laplace transform of that is going to be 1. We know the inverse Laplace transform of that is going to be e to the minus t sine of t. We'll mention a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, but notice the thing that we don't know yet is this. So if we look at this, this part that I just put the wiggly line under, and now I'm erasing the wiggly line. If we go back up to the Laplace transforms, notice it looks very close to this. Uh, the only difference is that the a's are different. So here in, in our denominator, a is equal to minus one, but notice in the numerator, a is equal to minus two. So we just need to split this into two pieces. So I'm gonna rewrite this as e to the minus pi s minus e to the minus two pi s, one half, one over s minus s plus one over s plus one squared plus one minus one over s plus one squared plus one plus one over s plus one squared plus one. Okay. So now we are in uh, the position where we can find the inverse Laplace transform of each one of these pieces. So for this first part, we're going to use a combination of the Laplace transform rules for the exponential trigonometric functions, in other words, these guys right here, as well as this purple one over here. Okay, so the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity in bra brackets, so I'm going to call the quantity, the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity in brackets, I'm going to call that little h of t. This is equal to one half, okay, the one half comes from that one half, times the inverse Laplace transform of one over s, which is one, minus the inverse Laplace transform of this piece, so that's minus e to the minus t cosine of t. Notice that a is equal to minus one, b squared is one, so that means b is one, and then minus the inverse Laplace transform of this piece, so that's minus e to the minus t sine of t. Okay, and I know the inverse Laplace transform of that piece is e to the minus t sine of t. So overall, the solution to the differential equation, or the initial value problem, is x of t. Okay, so dealing with the inverse Laplace transform of this piece, remember I'm going to use this purple line right here. Okay, so this is u pi of t h of t minus pi minus u two pi of t uh, u two pi of t times h of t minus two pi and then plus the inverse Laplace transform of that piece, which is e to the minus t sine of t. Uh, putting explicitly what this is, this is going to be u pi of t. Okay, for the h of t minus pi, remember this is h of t, so wherever I see a t, I'm going to put a t minus pi. So this is one half times one minus e to the minus t minus pi cosine of t minus pi minus e to the minus t minus pi sine of t minus pi. Now it's going to be minus u two pi of t one half one minus e to the minus t minus two pi cosine of t minus two pi minus e to the minus t minus two pi um, sine of t minus two pi. Now I need to add in this piece, so plus e to the minus t sine of t. Okay, but make, I wanna also, we're not quite done yet, so I shouldn't have written a period, so we're not quite done yet. Uh, why not? So this is kind of an interesting thing that's going on. So cosine of t minus pi, notice that cosine of t minus pi is just minus cosine of t. And sine of t minus pi is just minus sine of t. 
So we can write this a little more succinctly as follows. This is u pi of t times 1 half times 1 minus e to the minus t minus pi. And now cosine of t minus p is minus cosine, so that's plus cosine of t. And then similarly, it'll be plus e to the minus t minus pi sine of t. Okay, now something similar is going to happen with this next piece. So this is minus u pi of t, or u2 pi of t times 1 half. But notice that cosine of t minus 2 pi is just equal to cosine of t, since cosine is 2 pi periodic. And similarly, sine of 2 minus, uh, sorry, sine of t minus 2 pi is just equal to sine of t because sine is 2 pi periodic. So this is now 1 minus e to the minus t minus 2 pi cosine t minus e to the minus t minus 2 pi sine t. And then we have to add this last piece, this last plus e to the minus t sine of t. So if we want, we can factor out an e to the uh, pi from this term and an e to the pi from this term. Uh, and similarly, we can factor out an e to the 2 pi from this term and an e to the 2 pi from this term and really make it look uh, like a solution to a kind of typical non-homogeneous equation, typical meaning where the right-hand side has a continuous forcing function. And so if we were to do that, it would become the following. So I'm going to factor out an e to the pi. So this is e to the pi divided by 2 times u pi of t times 1 plus e to the minus t cosine t plus e to the minus t sine t minus, okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. This is e to the 2 pi over 2 u 2 pi of t times 1 minus e to the minus t cosine t minus e to the minus t sine t and then plus this last part plus e to the minus t sine of t. Okay, of course, where you want to stop is kind of up to you and whatever your instructor wants. I kind of went down to this step because I like the way it looks because it kind of it sort of illustrates the fact um, that each one of these pieces is kind of the solution um, to a to a different differential equation on each one of the intervals in, in a certain sense. Anyways, that's it for this video.